How do we follow that? Well, actually, I'm the guy that stood in the hut today, if you don't recognize me, because I don't want to embarrass anybody, but um, I was asked how long I stayed there. And I'll say, well, a few hours. No, no, I mean, how many days? No, 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 I'm on the ship with you. <laughs> So I, I can see I've made a lasting impression since I came on this ship. So, the, um, the hut, that was the hut I took today uh, at Des Moines. Um, no, it's, it's not a research station. It's a little transfer station. So, um, British Antarctic Survey, they had a base, and still have a base, right away down south in Rothera. Uh, it's difficult to get the ships down there, especially in the 70s when they didn't have a really powerful icebreaker. And to get the scientists down there early in the season, they dropped them off on that, um, well, more or less where we got off today, and using skidoos, pulled the stuff over to the hut, um, and then the base had a, an aeroplane, a little aeroplane. It flew up to the bay, up to the... Um, the hut here and collected the scientists in some stores and flew them back and forwards to Rothera. And the airstrip was that ridge up behind the hut. And so the little twin otters used to come hurtling up there. Taking off must have been quite interesting because you come hurtling down the slope and then you just drop off the end of a cliff. Um, I, I think they did have the odd uh, bump, but uh, I don't think any fatalities. So that, that's the history of, of that hut. It was set up in about 1973 and lasted for about 20 years until they got bigger <coughs> planes and started flying direct from the Falkland Islands. Um, the British um, Antarctic Heritage Trust does maintain a number of um, places around the peninsula. Um, these are old huts from the old bases have either got to be demolished or um, declared as a museum and kept as a museum. So the, the, the base that was in the area is Port Lockroy, which wasn't so far away. Um, and there's a, 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 an old base there which is run as a museum. Um, but we're going to a base tomorrow. Uh, but Paradise Harbour, that's where we were yesterday, I just thought I would talk a little bit about that. Um, bounded on the, on the east side by the continent, uh, and as Iggy said, we're gonna try and land on the continent tomorrow. Um, where we were, where the ship was parked, was on the other side from the continent all day yesterday. So we were on the island side, on the west side, next to Bride Island and up at the north end near Waterboat Point, actually directly opposite Waterboat Point, is Le Maire Island. And looking, um, where are we? Yes, look, looking um, to the, the south from where we were, we could see an Argentine base, Base Brown, or uh, originally it was, um, a naval base set up as Almirante Brown, um, and that was set up uh, in the early 50s, and um, by the, the by the Argentine Navy, um, and then it was taken over in the 60s uh, by the, the researchers. Uh, the institute, my notes haven't come up on here, so I'm. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that, that was a scientific base, and they did a lot of science um, and produced a lot of scientific papers. Uh, but then it was, um, uh, it was left for a while, uh, and then repopulated for a while, and then there was some scientists there for a year, and the story is that um, the new guys came down, took off all the personnel, put the new personnel there, and the base doctor, who hadn't really wanted to be there in the first place, and he'd spent a year there, realized that they hadn't brought another doctor and they were expecting him to stay another year. So he just set the place on fire. <laughs> he did, he burnt the place down, and he got his wish, and he went from an icy prison to an Argentinian prison. 
Um, and I believe they were rescued and taken round, uh, they were rescued by the hero and taken round the um, uh, US icebreaker and taken round to Palmer Station. Uh, and so, but his base has been partly rebuilt, but it's, it's a summer base if there is anyone there. So that, that was, we could see in the distance. Um, this was set up about 1950, about the same time as the, oh, I've got my notes here. Um, so, uh, about the same time as the, um, the Chilean base, um, which is at the Gonzalez Videla base, which um, Iggy said was set up again in about 1950, early 50s. Uh, and the president of Chile came to visit, that's, that's why it was named Gonzalez Videla. But if we look, just look very quickly at the, the history that I was talking about the other day, um, it really started in 1895 after the Geographical Conference uh, when a lot of nations came down here um, and a lot of small expeditions. Then it kind of died a bit of a death during the First World War. There wasn't a huge amount went on during the, between the two world wars, excepting that the United States finally got their act together and started to come down here with Admiral Byrd and his three expeditions in the late 20s and 30s. But again, there wasn't a huge amount happening with permanent bases. And it all kicked off again uh, after the Second World War in about 1950. Actually, the first ever base, all year round base, was Port Lockroy, which we were very near to today, uh, which is why that's preserved as a museum. Um, and then the science has just gone from strength to strength since then. Um, so, Waterboard Point, though, uh, where we're going tomorrow, that was the, the scene of, uh, it's recognized, I think, as the smallest ever wintering over party, two men, although I believe Admiral Byrd did overwinter in a little hut um, at one point in the 1930s, but there was two young guys, actually, that beat a bigger expedition, um, which kind of fell apart before it got going. And these two young guys, um, uh, Bagshaw and Lester, got the whalers to bring them down from Deception Island. Uh, they had very, very limited equipment and they lived underneath a water boat or in a water boat. These water boats um, are dotted, uh, dotted around the peninsula. I think I'll show you one there. Um, they're dotted around the, the peninsula area and the islands and they were used by the whaling ships in the 1920s and 30s to go over to the glaciers and fill up with fresh water for the steam engines and they, they just left them dotted around in strategic places and there was a one at Waterboat Point when Bagshaw and Lester went there and they lived in it and they were determined to stay there for at least a year actually lasted a year and a day and they did they made a makeshift tidal gauge and they did a tidal study of the tides for the entire uh, 12 months and they did the very first serious penguin studies while they were there and you know what these guys were aged 19 and 22 spent a whole year there so without further ado we'll hand over to Kirsty. Thanks, Trevor.